What's going on guys? Welcome back to another breakdown. Here we got a CP passage breakdown. I'm excited. We got a chemistry passage breakdown. All right, I'm going to show you guys how to make this passage make sense, how to make these passages easy. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to pick the best answer choice and how you can get 132 in the CP and BB sections, okay? The MCAT is way easier than you think. Whoever told you the MCAT is hard is lying to you, or lying to your face, all right? So, as always, guys, before I break this down, I'm going to show you how to get all these right. Go ahead and do the passage on your own first and answer the questions on your own first and then resume the video and hear me break it down. OK, so this is passage number one. All right, I'm going to scroll down here. Pause it whenever you need to. It's actually a short passage, so just read through it, guys. Here's the first question. Pick your answer. Second question. Pick your answer. Third question. Pick your answer. Fourth question, pick your answer, and I believe that is it. Okay, so four questions only. All right, I'm going to break it down right now. Phase diagrams represent the behavior of a pure substance, water, with respect to pressure, temperature, and volume. One example is a temperature versus volume diagram and is given below in figure one. All right, pretty simple, guys. Nothing too crazy here. All right, temperature versus volume. Here's a phase diagram. Here's the figure. I don't look at the figure now. I only look at the figure when the question asks me to. I don't want to waste time trying to analyze this figure, okay? The line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, represents an isobar, while the area underneath the dome depicted by the bold line is called the wet region, wet region, and represents liquid coexisting with vapor. Okay, so the wet region is liquid coexisting with vapor. I am highlighting things that stick out at me and I'm highlighting to get a mental note in my head. All right, this mental note in my head is gonna help me remember these details when the question comes for it. This area coincides with the liquid vapor equilibrium line on a pressure versus temperature diagram. All right, the liquid is the same thing as a pressure versus temperature diagram. Okay, the points to the left of the dome represent the liquid phase. Liquid phase, here's the dome. While those to the right represent the vapor phase, vapor. Equations of states, EOS, are often used to obtain P, V, and T data if a phase diagram such as the one above is not available. So EOS, when they're not available. Okay, cool. The most widely applied EOS is the ideal gas law, which best models substances at high temperatures and low pressure. Cool. Very simple, straightforward. Phase diagram passage, majority testing your content knowledge here, okay? Which of the following offers the best explanation for why line one to two has a steeper slope than line one to, than four to five? All right, if we look at one to two here, it is steeper than four to five. We go from a liquid to a gas. All right, and here we go from gas to even a higher volume and a higher temperature, that's it. A. The heat of fusion for water is greater than the heat of vaporization. All right, this is wrong. Going from a liquid to a gas, that energy required to go from that phase change is the heat of vaporization. Okay, we don't need anything about the heat of fusion for water. Okay, that's nothing to do with this. The entropy for liquid water is greater than the entropy for water vapor. This is wrong. The entropy for water vapor is greater than the entropy for liquid. All right, there's more disorder in gas molecules than liquid. Liquid phases are less compressible than gas phases. This is true. I don't know if this necessarily explains, I, yeah, I guess it does, it does explain it because if you are increasing or decreasing the volume, that has something to do with the compressibility of a liquid and a gas, okay? And this is also true, okay? Solids are the hardest to compress liquids are easier to compress than solids and gases are the um the most able to compress okay that makes sense so liquid phases are less compressible than gas phases d the universal constant r is smaller for liquids thus resulting in a higher value no r is a constant it's the same thing for everything okay you have you have only two different types of r you have the 8.1314 and you have the point zero zero eight. Okay, those are the two R constants you have to memorize for the MCAT. And you should know when to use each when given different um, variables. So like when you're given atmosphere, 
which one do you use? Okay. And you're given Pasquale's, which one should you use? You should know that. So the answer is C. Liquid phases are less compressible than gas phases. Okay. Gases, the molecules are going everywhere. They're easily compressible. If the conditions for 0.9 replicate inside a glass container, what would an observer see inside? 0.9. What do we got here? All right. Well, we got here's liquid and then it goes, we're increasing the temperature, increasing the temperature, increasing the volume. All right. We're at the boundary here. So we're becoming a vapor now. And then from eight to nine, we are increasing the temperature, but the volume stays the same. We're already a vapor here. We're already a vapor, but we're increasing the temperature while keeping the pressure constant. All right. If we're doing that, we're going above the critical point. This is the critical point. This is where we have a phase change. So it's going to be a super critical fluid. All right. That's what it's called when you have a fluid that goes beyond the critical point. Super critical fluid. All right. And the liquid is wrong. Vapor is wrong. Liquid and vapor, that's wrong. Okay. Super critical fluid. That's what it is. If you have any questions, guys, just comment down below. I'll be, I'll be happy to answer them. This is a pretty easy passage, so I'm going to go through it a little quicker, okay? Suppose the researcher begins with 100 grams of liquid and follows paths 4 to 5 and 6 to 7. Compared to segment 4 to 5, the researcher would observe that segment 6 to 7 has a what? All right, let's look at 4 to 5, 6 to 7. The only difference is that 6 to 7, the volume is smaller than 4 to 5. 6 to 7 also has a higher temperature. So you, what are you going to have here? Okay, compared to segment four to five, the research will observe that segment six to seven has a higher pressure. Yes. Okay, because we're at a higher temperature and a lower volume. Okay, remember a lower volume means higher pressure. That's going to equal a higher pressure. Okay, all those vapor molecules, since it's at a higher temperature, we're going to have more uh, molecules in the vapor. They're going to be bouncing around more. The kinetic energy is going to increase of those gas molecules. And if the kinetic energy increases of those gas molecules, you're going to have more likelihood of collisions on a specific area. And those collisions on that area is going to be um, higher pressure. That's what's going to happen. All right. Lower pressure? No. Higher vapor mass? No. Lower vapor mass? No. The vapor mass doesn't change because we only have 100 grams of liquid. We're starting with 100 grams of liquid. Okay. We don't add grams of liquid. We don't take away grams of liquid here. Okay. The answer for this one is three is A. Which of the following is the correct relationship for the heat required when going from 0.1 to 0.3? Okay. You use the Q equals MCAT equation when you are going from uh, X amount of degrees to X amount of degrees in the same phase. Okay. Meaning you only use Q equals MCAT if you're going from, let's say, five degrees celsius of water to 10 degrees celsius of water the q equals mcat tells you the energy required to go from five degrees celsius of water to 10 degrees celsius of water you use the m times l okay l stands for delta h vaporization delta h fusion okay those different ones that's what l stands for so depending on what phase change you're going through you're going to use a different delta h so we're going from a liquid to a gas. So we're going to use delta H vaporization, okay, as our L. When you are going from a phase change from a liquid to a gas, okay, this phase change occurs at a constant temperature. All right, so Q equals M delta H vape. I'm going to write it out here so it's a little easier, okay. Q equals ML. All right, L could be delta H vape, delta H fusion. In this case, the L is going to be delta H vape. All right, because we're going from a liquid to a gas, it's vaporization, all right? This occurs at a constant temperature when you're going from a liquid to, let's say, a gas. All right, so we don't need a delta T here. It occurs at a constant temperature. Q is just the energy required to go from a liquid to a gas, all right? So we're gonna need this. We're gonna need Q equals MCAT as well. All right, what else? We also need another Q equals MCAT because we're going from a temperature of here to a temperature of here. Hmm, actually, it's pretty interesting here. P 
Pretty interesting here. All right, let's see. Q goes MCAT? No, we don't have this by itself. So A is wrong. <coughs> Bless you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Okay, B. Q equals MCAT plus M delta H vape. I like this answer, but this only tells me that Q equals MCAT to go from here to here. The phase change, M delta H. And then we are traveling. We're going to the right. We're increasing the volume. Okay, we're increasing the volume, but the temperature remains the same. Hmm. I like this one, but it doesn't really tell me everything. MC delta T is less than Q, which is less than MC water delta T plus M delta H vaporization. This, this is a better answer because we're going from, ugh, I don't like this at all, actually. I don't like this. I'm gonna 